just a, a couple of facts about the book that um, you have all been so kind to come here to uh, celebrate the, its 20th birthday. Um, there are now two covers on it. Uh, there is this, the new one, and this is the old one. I confess I have a certain fondness for the old one. Uh, the cover, original cover picture was selected because when you came out of the Port Authority bus terminal, that's what you used to see when the book was written. Uh, that building is no longer there. It's been torn down. Uh, uh, you know, everything changes. Uh, and uh, this is one of the things that changed. Uh, what's on the co cover now is a sort of generalized picture from uh, Broadway. It has nothing to do with anything in the book, particularly. <laughs> but what the hey? <laughs> the title is the same, and I like the colors more. So you win a few, you lose a few. The primary thesis underlying my several arguments here is that Given the mode of capitalism under which we live, life is at its most rewarding, productive, and pleasant when large numbers of people understand, appreciate, and seek out interclass contact and communication conducted in a mode of goodwill. My secondary thesis is, however, that the class war raging constantly and often silently in the comparatively stabilized societies of the developed world, though it is, as ta at, though it is at times as hard to detect as Freud's unconscious or the structure of discourse, perpetually works for the erosion of the social practices through which interclass communication takes place and of the institution, institutions holding those practices stable so that, the new so that new institutions must always be conceived and set in place to take over the jobs of those that are battered again and again until they are destroyed. My tertiary thesis to which now and again we shall return, is that while the establishment and utilization of those institutions always involve specific social practices, the effects of my primary and secondary thesis are regularly perceived at the level of discourse. Therefore, it is only by a constant renovation of the concept of discourse that society can maintain the most conscientious and informed field for both the establishment of such institutions and practices and, by extension, the necessary critique of those institutions and practices, a critique necessary if new institutions of any efficacy are to develop. At this level, it is largely stabilizing, dis in, in, at this level, in its largely stabilizing, destabilizing ro role, superstructure uh, and superstructure at its most oppositional can impinge on infrastructure. 